Good morning everyone, this is John with Gun.Deals. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Rock Island Armory 5.0e. Now this is actually a slight follow-up and improvement, hence the E for enhancement, of the older Rock Island Armory 5.0. But before we get into that, while you're here, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe, as that is all free and does help us out quite a bit. And go ahead and comment your favorite $2,000 steel frame handgun in the comments down below. Now getting into the basics of just what the 5.0E is, this isn't really based off of anything else. There's only a couple parts that can be switched out with any other gun on the market. So it is basically a completely new gun. Now the MSRP as I mentioned is around $2,000 which is definitely on the expensive side of things. but for very nice 1911s, 2011s, very nice CZs or whatnot, this class of firearm is certainly not my forte. Now starting out with the frame, it is a steel frame with polymer grips, so in theory you could have aftermarket grips in the future for your specific set of hands, although the ones that they have on the gun currently are quite grippy. The one issue that I would have with the rest of the steel frame is that there's not really much texture to it, so while the polymer panels work well, the rest of the frame is basically bare steel. Now as the 5.0 name implies, the barrel is I believe 4.91 inches long. Overall weight comes in at 34 ounces with a 17 plus one round capacity. Now on the slide, you have a new multi-optic mounting system, which basically means that the slide is milled from the factory for just about every optic on the market. In terms of the sights that it comes with, they are night and fiber optic sights and they are very high visibility and they work quite well. Now the frame and the slide are covered in a DLC like coating, which is a great, very, very durable, very wear resistant, very heat resistant, very corrosion resistant finish, so I don't have any issues with that. Now getting back to the grip for just a minute, talking about the ergonomics, it does have a very natural grip angle, so it's not very canted like a Glock. It's much more 1911-ish, if you will. In terms of the controls, the magazine release is prominent and easy to reach, though maybe a tad too exposed for a concealed carry style handgun, though again, that's not what this is. The slide stop slide release lever is very prominent, very easy to actuate, so I don't have any complaints with that. And the gun overall has kind of a long heavyweight gun, points very well. Now moving into recoil, you have a very low profile slide with lightning cuts on the front and serrations in the back. On top of that, you of course have the steel frame and very interesting on this handgun, you have a almost square, super heavy barrel for again, nine millimeter. That means that the recoil is very low. It feels similar to a ported or a comped handgun though this of course is missing both of those things. It's a very slow, smooth recoil impulse and it gets right back on to target without much effort. So even for some of the less experienced shooters out at the gathering, they were able to use it quite effectively. Now, moving on to the trigger. This is a very interesting component. It comes in at about four and a half pounds, which for me is perfectly fine. It almost has a two stage feel to it. Like if you're used to a two year stage trigger on like an AR, so you have a very short amount of take up. You hit a wall that is again about four pounds or so. And then you have a good bit of mush until at the back it breaks out again about four and a half pounds. So the trigger is a little mushy in terms of the dynamics, but the trigger weight is very good about four and a half pounds. The reset is very forced and tactile. So it feels good in that regard. It is maybe a tad long. So while I certainly wouldn't consider the trigger to be the best trigger I've ever felt, the weight and the way that it works with the recoil feels quite nice. So again, I might have minor gripes with it, especially for that $2,000 price tag, but again, it does work. So putting all of that together and talking about how it was to actually shoot the thing, again, it's a $2,000 handgun and it feels very, very nice. I usually shoot very inexpensive handguns and it is a night and day difference between say a sub seven or $800 handgun. However, you could probably achieve a similar level of performance for less money, but for what they're going for here, for the higher end crowd, let's say, maybe it's a compelling option. Again, it's just not my wheelhouse whatsoever, these high end handguns, because honestly, I would have a hard time spending $2,000 on a rifle, let alone a handgun for more uh, target or competition use. Again, this gun definitely wasn't designed with people like me in mind. This is definitely more of a high end piece. 
One thing that I will say is that uh, the two examples that they had out at the gathering went through about three to 4,000 rounds, I believe, without issue while I was there. So that is a nice thing that you don't always see from a very expensive high-end handgun. Sometimes the way that they feel so nice is by tightening up some tolerances and they get a little finicky when the round count gets above a few hundred rounds. With all that out of the way, guys, let me know what you think of the Rock Island Armory 5.0e. If you think it's worth the money, especially for a high-end handgun, do you think it can compete with other options in that same price category? I'd be interested to know your thoughts because a lot of you in the uh, comments and in the audience are going to be a lot more knowledgeable than I am on, again, these higher end handguns. So with all of that out of the way, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. I will see you in the next one. Peace off.